So let's get started. Listen, common challenges that I know some of you all are facing, Ganesha was kind enough to say, and many of you guys tell me um, very similarly that you are not tech savvy um, and uh, you've got inefficient processes, not a great uh, amount of training. I just got an email from somebody who is new in the business and training is of big concern. Even if you're existing and you've been a travel advisor for some time, training is still uh, one of the most number one things that you need to do, not to mention um, supplier training, but really where I come in is the operational training. So. You know, maybe you started your business years ago and or you're starting now. What I do find consistently as a challenge is not really understanding how to set up the business properly, making sure that you're compliant both in your local arena and um, state wise, depending on which state you're in. And then technology gaps. So if you're trying to go live in Facebook um, in your group and you don't use their software, it is a little bit of a challenge. And so how do you overcome that and complexities associated with all things technology? Because we are in the time where you need to have some, some sort of tech stack to be able to effectively operate your business. Now, with all of these challenges, what I know is about the solutions that are available. So when it comes to communications, the conversation is oftentimes disconnected from each other. And how many of you guys feel like that? That the conversations that you have with your clients, maybe they opted in on a travel guide or some stranger or opt-in offer that you've got, and they're, they texted you on Facebook, uh, using Facebook Messenger, maybe somebody texted you on your phone, maybe you got an email, and all of those conversations that you're having with people are disconnected. How many of you guys feel like that? I will say I felt like that for years where I have people in my Facebook personal messenger, my business messenger, Instagram, my text, email, and not to mention um, you know, personal Facebook. <laughs> Let's not forget personal Facebook. So I have multiple channels of people coming at me with information and God forbid I'm in the middle of a group trip and I'm trying to remember if somebody asked me to do something. I don't remember. I remember, you know, 80% of the time that percentage is dropping every year, but I remember that somebody sent me something, but where is it? So now I find myself hunting and pecking to find out where that message was. Do, do any of you guys experience that inside of your business, Tabitha, you say that's you? That's been me for years, trying to um, really keep track of where and when somebody said something because I feel and have felt for so long that I am inundated with requests and conversations it was very hard to keep it straight. So I looked for software for many years to at least streamline the noise in Facebook because we heavily for a long time, not to mention now I've got YouTube, right? So you got YouTube people chatting with you and sending you messages in YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, my email, text messaging, and trying to keep all of those conversations straight. I was just looking for a tool to just centralize the Facebook conversations between personal messenger, why Facebook did that drives me insane. But just between my personal and business messenger, I was really just trying to keep the conversation centralized. Poor response time. I, for years, have been horrible in responding to Facebook business messengers because I couldn't get the, no like the notification didn't come to me. How many of you guys felt like that? I like, like, do you have like the chat on Facebook business page turned on and it's a different messenger. Like, I don't know why people build tools and they create different communication channels. So Facebook business messenger is separate than personal messenger. So if somebody messages you on your business page and your notifications aren't turned on, 
you may be missing messages. And that was me for a long time um, until I got a software to help me track, keep, you know, dinging me on when it was. And then it was just so much. It was like so many dings, ding, 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 ding. It was ding, 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 ding all day long. And there was a lot of manual steps in the management of that communication. The tools were complex. I mean, there was a time that I was using a chat tool called mini chat. And I was, this is before the introduction of AI and AI became a household name. And I was setting up conversations, auto response conversation. Like it was like building a, a, a you know, a, a Zaduko puzzle, solving a Zaduko puzzle, doing a crossword and it, trying to run the business all at the same time. And you need the answer and the puzzle to be fixed now. I mean, the tools in terms of complexity are tremendous. And so... What we did is, I'm pretty techy, <laughs> and I still get hung up on stuff. And so this is the reason why we created Opus, which is our operations pillars of success. We, I, I realized pretty early on in my journey um, as a travel advisor and as an online business owner that, um, and particularly in the travel space, I've been in the travel space since 2017, um, I was just looking at, I guess, 2018 officially. And um, the industry that we're in is a great industry. But in terms of our tool sets and what's available, although I would have to say in the last six months, it's getting much better. Um, there is a need for change. There is a need for adoption of technology in the travel space that makes it easier for us to do our job. There's a, there's a lot of trial and error that I know that travel advisors have made, have done in order to run their business. I am of the same, uh, in the same boat, um, but th it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money to trial and error your way through your business. And so what we've done with Opus is really try to take a lot of the trial and error out of, of your um, hair because it's not your favorite thing to do when it comes to technology and developing standards and business processes and all of the stuff that geeks me out. Um, this is the reason why we created Opus. And so in Opus, the birth of that really came from you all. You all asked for help um, and many people asked me for help in areas of how to be more efficient in the way that they operate, how they launch their business, how they operate the business, and ultimately how you market the business. So we created Opus, and there are five pillars to Opus. The travel request pillar, which deals with it taking and accepting requests, presenting your group trips in a way that's consistent and optimized for sale, payments and terms, so really how you accept payments in your business and the legality of that and the types of terms that you need to have in place. Pillar four is all about booking management and client communication. And pillar five is really about monitoring your results and your reputation. And this today, this month, we are here. We are going to be talking about the client communication part of your business and how to be effective and efficient and standardize wherever you possibly can the communication that you have with your prospective clients and your people who have actually paid you to get them out of town. So who's this workshop for? This workshop is for new and seasoned advisors because what I do know is the landscape of technology is changing and it's changing rapidly. And so what used to be okay for you to just have a phone, uh, you know, a cell phone and maybe an email is not necessarily what you need today to be able to stay connected to your clients. Um, I, I did a poll a couple of weeks ago asking what was people's favorite mode of connection. And a lot of people said text messaging and a lot of people said email. However, what I will tell you is even though that those are your favorite modes, those may not be the favorite modes of your clients. And so even though you may enjoy a particular type of communication path, your clients may not. They may want to only have one. And you as a service provider need to be able to meet people where they are. This is We are not in the kind of business where it's my way or the highway. Um, and the mentality has changed as well with technology and the ability to 
um, do so many different things, your clients are more savvy and have different expectations. What was acceptable five years ago, hell, even 16 months ago, isn't probably becoming acceptable to clients this way. So we wanna make sure you as advisors that you're equipped to meet your clients where they are. And so we are gonna be focused on Travel Pro Suite and um, uh, utilizing that tool set, there is a 14 day trial that you can start with today. So if you sign up at onlinetravelboss.com suite success trial, you'll be able to get access to our Travel Pro Suite and try out some of the things that we're gonna be going over today. You're gonna get free account setup. You're going to get a one-on-one -on -one onboarding call with our, with our onboarding specialist. You will get a done for you request set up. So the process to set up your travel requests will be done for you. And then you'll also get a masterclass that will teach you how to actually utilize the system when it comes to the master uh, travel requests and actually all of the pillars. So we do have a VIP that's gonna be directly after this session. So if you've already been enrolled in the VIP, we're gonna start exactly at 7.30 after this session. You do have an opportunity to join us in VIP if you'd like. There is an additional cost for that. It's $47 and you can go um, to enroll in our VIP at online travel boss forward slash sweet success VIP. We will be doing that three um, every day of our workshop right at the end of the workshop we will be starting our vip great opportunity if you have some very specific questions and you want my eyes on your business and the group's eyes on your business it's a perfect opportunity to get those eyes and you know i've had a lot of people who participate in vip have some breakthroughs and really get uh peel back the onion of some of the issues that they're facing inside of their travel business you'll also get the replay too every day of the workshop um unlimited days so let's get started in terms of what we're going to go over so before we dive in what I'd like to do is really talk about the client journey. And, you know, I talk about this pretty much every single time we do a workshop in a pillar, but I want to really make sure that you guys, you know, when you think about client, you know, the, the person said yes to you and you are ready to manage their record. You have already been having client conversations. They may have not been a paid client, but they have already entered your world before they actually swipe their credit card. And so before they swipe their credit card, they've had communications with you. They've already interacted with you. And so I want to remind you of the journey and where your potential clients may have started with you, where they are with you, and ultimately what you want to be doing all along the way when it comes to communication. Because it doesn't communication doesn't start after the sale. It starts well before the sale. And you want to have those paths defined and the tools set up so that you can be effective from day one to the time you get them back out of town. And um, so really three stages of clients, right? They're either strangers, acquaintances, BFFs. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because really the message that I want you to get out of here is people that interact with your business, you need to make it easy for them to interact no matter where they are in the stage of knowing you. They may be a stranger to you. You need to you need to make yourself accessible, right? You don't need to necessarily jump on every call with a stranger, but you need to make it easy if that's a part of your process, right? You need to make it easy for them to get information on demand when they have a question and they should and you should be able to respond to them near real time or very you know real time or very near real time in terms of people that reach out to you that is the quickest way to lose a sale if you don't have systems in place to respond to your clients perspective or existing when they ask a question even if it's an auto reply you got to have something acquaintances and BFFs, they are familiar with you. And so when they reach out to you, the expectation is, is that you're going to respond. It should not take days, weeks, or no response at all. It just doesn't sit well. So really just understand where your clients are because the types of communication that you potentially want to have in place is going to depend on where they are, right? I don't make myself as accessible to strangers as I do to my clients, right? 
but I do respond to strangers. If someone sends me an email, we do have a way to respond back to them, right? Obviously we can respond to an email, but I don't necessarily respond to our stranger emails. Like, so things that are coming to info at online travel boss, I have an, a VA that responds to them, but somebody on our team, we have auto responses that go back to them depending on where they started. We have chat bots. We have uh, SMS messages. We have messenger responses. So we are in constant conversation with strangers, either physically or in some automated fashion. And with people who join our events, we want to communicate and make sure that they show up to our events, right? So we've got email automations, SMS text messages. For our clients, we have groups. We have Facebook groups. We have WhatsApp groups. We respond to them in text messaging. We've got automation that automatically goes out. So depending on where they are, will dictate potentially the type of communication that you want to have in place. Your goal, no matter where you are in your business is to attract, relate and convert and then fulfill on the service, right? So there's really another um, item and I may call that S for arcs, which would be S for service, which is some, you want to be attracting people to your business people's businesses die because nobody knows that they exist. They don't have enough clients to financially withhold the business usually, right? So you've got to have some system to attract, right? Communication is key to that, right? Making sure that you've got a way to people to notice you. And for once they notice you that that quickly gets into your, they get into your ecosystem so that you can start and continue the conversation. And there's some sort of ongoing communication going. That's really what relationship is. Relationship building is, is the ongoing conversation that you have with people in um, that find you either new existing or what have you. And then convert is really around selling. Right. So you want more people to say yes to you. Right. More people to say, yes, I want to go on that trip. More people to say, yes, I want to actually um, give me a quote. Yes to you want more yeses. Right. So you got to get through the nose to get to the yeses, but you need to create offers so people can say yes to them. And so if you are really good at attract and relate, but you don't ask for the sale, then you just have a bunch of friends and you really want a bunch of people who are clients. So these are your goals when it comes to communication, when it comes to marketing, when it comes to anything that you do, you want to attract, you want to have communications set up for attraction. You want communications that allow you to relate and you want to communicate with your clients once they've made the sale. All right. So now with all of that as the basis. So again, I want you to always keep those three contexts in mind. You have available channels to you, right? External channels. Everyone is pretty much familiar because this is where we spend the most of our time dealing with people, strangers, right? Um, marketing and, and potentially even with our existing clients in external channels that we don't have influence over. There is, you know, since Facebook and Instagram and all these platforms came about, there's this heavy, heavy reliance on these platforms for the conversation. But, you know, I had a client and I, you know, when I was putting together this present, this, this uh, training, it, um, it reminded me of a client who just recently, she lost access to her Facebook uh, account, not group, her entire account was shut down. Um, and if any of you have ever had that happen, you know how traumatic it is. Um, so forget when Facebook goes down, because that's not as often as, or it's not as plausible. It happens, like it goes down. I mean, Facebook went down about four or five months ago. It was down for like 15 minutes. And I remember the first time that that happened to me when I was in active Facebook ads, we were spending like $150 a day, I think $200 a day on ads and the ads were down, like ads, the whole system was down and I had a hiccup, like I, my heart stopped. And what the story is meant to tell you is you don't control these platforms. You don't control your access to them. If they say you're violating whatever, right? The rules, the game, whatever, and they shut you out and you don't have any other system in place to communicate with your clients, you're at your SOL, right? And 
and, and it's happened. I know a lot of people it's happened and, and knock on wood, I hope it never happens to you. But the point of me letting you know this is that it doesn't, it's not yours. It doesn't matter how big your following is on any of these channels. If you lose access to the channels, you lose access to your revenue. So we don't want to rely solely on communication from these channels that we control. That's really the spirit that I want you guys to realize. You don't own the social media platforms. You don't own the search engine. If you are at somebody else's event and trade show that you attend, I know a lot of people in the destination wedding space, they go to wedding um, wedding shows and you know different event shows and you're enticed by the fact that there's going to be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of brides there. You don't own the list. That's not your list. You don't know if those brides are your your peeps, right? Guest blogging, online advertising, even though it gets you in front of people, it's not yours. And really, when it comes to everything that you do in your business, it should be to be in the external world, but really, we want to be moving people to our world, right? We want our own website. We want our own chat bots. We want our own email list, our own mobile app, our own phone text message, our own communities, our own events that we're hosting, our own blog and newsletter that we are controlling the message. We get to define it how we want and it's ours. So if it goes down, you get to look at the person in the mirror and be like, what happened? Now, don't get me wrong. There, you know, cloud strike happened last week. It was down. And like how many people were impacted, right? We are, are imp- we are like, nothing is a hundred percent ours, right? You are, you do have impacts when major system faulty errors happen, right? But it's still more in your control you're, you're not going to bring your website down on purpose because you violated a rule, right? <laughs> Facebook will do that. You know, don't get me wrong. I love Facebook. But the point is, is that access to your website is only controlled by the DNS provider or the website availability, right? That is it. You get to control the content and the availability of that content is all within your control. And so, these are the channels and so really the problem with these two disconnected channels is that the brand your brand right who you are your logo right you don't necessarily get to if you are a guest speaker on somebody's blog or somebody's group you don't get to brand and you know talk about who you are as much as you would like if you were in your own community right it's a lot of information trying to be in when, you know, I'm going to tell you a quick story. When I first started in social in on, in the online space, you know, I had I was I didn't know anything about showing up and what it looked like and how to grow a community and all of that. And so one of the things that I I learned early on is like you should go into other people's Facebook groups and you should you know add yourself value. You should post. And this is you know back in the uh, mid 2000s, 2015, 16, and 17. And there weren't you know Facebook groups were not as big. Um, in terms of lockdown as they are now, like you could go in other people's group and you could post and it was one big happily family. Um, and so I would go into other people's group and I would post my hearts like, at, like three times a day. I was doing a bunch of crazy stuff and it was hard to keep up, like trying to, to, to add value in somebody else's group and then do it in my group. And then all the stuff that I was trying to manage, it was a lot to keep. I literally remember like being uh, like, I had this spreadsheet of like all the posts and I'm cutting and pasting throughout the day. Cause there wasn't any software that you could post automatically in other people's um, areas. And I was manually doing it. So they're like a timer. There's like, I got to post here, here, here. It was just too much information, not to mention all the content that I was doing. Um, automation. There was no way to automate it. There's no way to really automate between um, external and internal um, uh, communication channels if you haven't set that up. So there's a lot of automation issues. So I'm in uh, social media. How do I get my Facebook group new members? How do I get them into my email platform? That integration sometimes is not present in your solutions. I already told you, like responding to Facebook business messengers was my Achilles heel for years. People would send me messenger messages and I wouldn't get it. Not to mention 
you know, the feature of people sending you message requests in your personal, and then it goes to this like black hole, and then you don't even see it. There was like a, like a whole year before I even knew that that feature exists, that people were sending me messages that weren't my friends, and I didn't even know it because I, I didn't know that I had to turn that feature on. And so really, you got to monitor the responses on all the platforms. If you're on the platforms, if you offer them, you got to have a way to be able to respond. Um, and it just takes so much time. That's the, the problem with the internal and external and, you know, customer communication channel preferences. What does my client like if my client likes to be on Facebook and send me Facebook Messenger, like because I'm Facebook Messenger challenge, should I prevent them to do that? Should I force them to be in a channel just because I can't figure out how to use it? No, you need to meet people where they are. We are in and, and these are the types of things that are going to set you apart from your competitor. Right. I, I literally know travel advisors who don't do any texting. I'm like, what? What do you mean you don't text? And, you know, I just look and I'm like, okay, it's your choice, but right, like 99% of, of, of the world text, right? Not to mention the other, <laughs> if they're not texting, they're on social media. So why not have the ability? The reason you don't want to do it is because you can't keep track of the conversation. That's the reason why I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to text. I don't want people texting because I don't want it on my personal phone. I don't want people in my messenger because it was hard as heck to find the conversation in messenger um, because there's no real CRM system in Facebook or any of the message platforms. So I always channel people through email. But what if you didn't have to do that anymore? What if you, if your number one goal is to get everybody off of the external platform into your platform, wouldn't it be like, this not even a wish. This is what you have to do. Like your number one goal has to be this. It, it, it can't, because Facebook wants you to have the people on Facebook, right? YouTube wants the people to stay on YouTube. So they reward you, right? So if you put links in, in posts, that take you off of the platform, they penalize you, right? All of the platforms do, right? If you if you start broadcasting with a megaphone at somebody else's event and you don't respect their rules, you'll get you'll get blocked, right? But your goal in dealing with any external channel is to get that lead into your world. End of story. So every event and every action that you are doing, and if you're spending a concerted amount of time in someone else's channel that you don't own, your objective is to get them off of that platform into your world, right? Like I want you guys to really, I want you to write that down. I want you to underline it. If you're on social media and you don't have a way to get somebody off of social media into your website, onto your email list, into your world, you're wasting your time on social media, right? Because if it goes down and you need to talk to them you, you, let's say you want to run promotions to them. Let's say you've got a Facebook group and it's got 10,000 people in it and you want to run a promotion and Facebook is down and you don't have their email addresses. That means you got to wait till Facebook gets up. What if you get kicked out of your, uh, I mean, God forbid you get kicked out of your group, but what if your account gets shut down? 10,000 users don't do you any good if you don't own the assets and the asset for you is their contact information. So if you've got these platforms and you don't own the asset, which is the email and the contact information of your leads, your community, everything, you don't really have assets. You have pretend assets. Don't get me wrong. Don't come in my inbox and be like, I got assets. I got assets. Your number one goal is to get them off the platform into your world. Number two goal is to automate the connection. So if you're in social media and you have an internal platform, you have an internal channel, you want to integrate and automate the connection of that channel as much as possible. Let me give you some examples of that, right? Social media, if somebody sends me a message on my Facebook business page that immediately is integrated with our Travel Pro Suite, and that conversation is there. It automatically creates a contact in our system. 
I don't need any other third party tool to get it over there, right? My Facebook group, I do need a third party tool for this though. Every person who comes into my Facebook group, one of the questions that we ask is what's your email address? I've got a software that connects my Facebook group to my email to Travel Pro Suite that makes sure that I get their email address. So if they snuck in and they missed me some other way, they're gonna get into my world, into my email list through my Facebook group, through that integration that I have. My goal is any external channel that somebody finds me on that I have automated the connection to my world as much as possible. So what we have done and what we can do inside of our software is, and we're going to talk about this, is we can automate the connections in a few of these areas in external channels. So that is goal number two. Goal number three is to get traffic. So now that I've got I'm, I'm playing in the external world right because that's where the people are at i don't get to just play in my world because i don't have a hundred percent of everybody i want to meet i gotta go out there and go outside right i'm an introvert but i still gotta go outside and gotta play with people right i play with them on the internet streets and i want an automated way for them to come into my world so i gotta get traffic so i can be visible to them that's goal number three so this week, what we're going to be talking about is how to set up these channels, how to automate the conversation where possible, and then getting traffic and engagement as much and as much as much traffic as you can stand and ways to ensure that you're doing it as efficiently as possible. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the communication channels and getting that set up inside of your world and your ecosystem so that you can be as efficient as possible and wherever you can have connections that you've at least established those connections. Now, many of you are going to be like, well, I already have phone and text message and email. What all else do I need? Maybe I've got a Facebook group. So let's talk about these four areas that we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about some business basics. We're going to talk about deciding on the communication channel. We're going to talk about obtaining your online assets and making sure that you've got all of the assets that you have within your that you um, that represent who you are, that you've got them under your control, at least from a name perspective. And then we're going to talk about what it looks like to have your contact list set up for success so that when it comes to future communications or ongoing communications, you have somebody to actually um, launch to. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, and do not worry, you all are going to get this workbook at the end of our um, session. So stick with me through this workshop. I'm going to give this to you guys as a bonus, which is going to be your client communication workbook and just have all of these things. So today, what I want you to do is we're going to really be focused on day one, which is um, we're going to start with business basics. So. How many of you guys have a business name already defined? Type in the comments. Do you have a business name? How many of you guys struggling with the business name? So this is a travel business name for your business. You know, if you've been in business, you most, most of you, anybody out there not have a business name? Because if you don't, um, I have my name and website and domain. Perfect. So you'll be able to check these things off. So obviously the first thing that you want to do is you want to have the business name identified here, um, me, uh, Ganesha, we did talk about this, so I am familiar that you're struggling with the business name, and that is okay, but I don't want any of you all to do is stay stuck on a business name, because frankly, a lot of you all, you create business names that are meaningful to you and not meaningful to your ideal audience, right? So I'll, I'll give you an example. When I my The name of our travel business is Sugar Travel. Um, and the sugar is a play on uh, beaches because I, I love beaches. And so and the sugar is the first letter, the first two letters of my name and the first three letters of my last name spell sugar. So I like making sort of crazy meanings of names. Right. But it means nothing to anyone else. Right. It doesn't tell anyone who I help and what I stand for and all of that. And so we spend a lot of time normally on a business name. That really doesn't have a meaning. I'd rather you, all of you all like have a name. If you're going to struggle over a name, struggle over a name that's going to be meaningful to your, the person that you want to work with so that when they see the name, they'll know it's you. 
But if you don't, it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, what we're going to be doing is focusing on these other things about our brand that's going to make it painfully obvious of who we are. So business basics, we need to have a business name. Lean Domain Search is a really great website that allows you to um, search. Um, and I'm just going to take you here really quick. Um, oh, I'm going to fix the name of that. Uh, I think I lean, hold on, I'll fix that link, lean uh, domain search. And so what this app does is, let me just delete that, put that here. What this, what this website does, it allows you to, um, search for a name of a business, um, a name to see if the domain is there. So I'm going to just type in my name of our business. And when you search for it, what it'll do is it will let you know if the name is uh, available. Um, and so this name is not available. Um, but these are the derivatives of the name. I'm like, what is this register now thing? I gotta go check that out. Um, so this this just tells you what the derivatives are available. So maybe you want online travel boss, right? This is my name, um, but these other names are available. I've been able to use this when it comes to concept thinking. So let's say I wanna work with, you know, uh, start travel business right? That's, that's who I help. And so that's the URL that I would want to do start travel business. And, you know, you can put in a combination of keywords and it's going to let you know what's available. And then you could decide on some derivatives. So basic thing for you all to do is just make sure you have a name, make sure you have the URL defined for the name. And then the last thing is, is that you want to have your name locked down. So Sunday Gardner, I have that name. Nobody else has that name. You don't want anybody else to own your name. If you have a common name, then um, I always tell people then get your name with your middle initial or your name and your middle, your middle name. Somehow you want a, you are the representative, you are the main person of influence when it comes to your business. So you want to make sure that you've got not only your business name, but also your name URL locked down as well. So we want to make sure that these two things are done, that you've got name of the business, a domain for it, and your name locked down. Then we're going to talk about, anybody have any questions on the brand? You know, these are pretty much, if you guys are in business, you probably already have these two things. Just want to start with the basics. GoDaddy, if you are going to use Travel Pro Suite, we integrate seamlessly with GoDaddy. Um, uh, uh, really good. We also integrate with Cloudflare. So if you get a domain or your need of a business domain and your name to connect those domains, if you use GoDaddy, that's going to be a very easy setup for us uh, to be able to do that for you in the future. All right. So brand, the next thing is logos. How many of you all have a logo um, for your business? If you don't have a logo, let me know in comments. Do you have a logo for your business? Very simple these days to create a logo, but we need logos in a um, in a couple of sizes and colors. So Fiverr is a really good app, um, a good place to get a logo from. It's just a, um, I'm just going to click on Fiverr for you all. It's just a location. I am not affiliated with Fiverr at all, but I have used them myself. They are a great, I just, none of my links are working. Sorry about that. Uh, Fiverr, it's, and it's Fiverr. So fi the whole concept came from $5. Uh, so it's Fiverr with a, an R at the end. So Fiverr. Dot com. These it's a marketplace of providers, small, um, small digital requests. I mean, they even have I mean, if I've got big projects, I usually will go to another vendor like Upworks to get larger projects. But if you've got like images that you want to create logos that you want to create, Fiverr is a really low economical way to get really great design work from um, people. I've had um, I've had 
uh, PDFs created on, you know, like, so my downloadable documents I've had created on Fiverr. And so I want to get a travel logo. You can just use this site here to get a travel logo or a logo provider. And the thing that I would say that you want to do is you just want to look at their reviews, look at their, um, look at their samples, their portfolio, see what kinds of jobs, just make sure that they're doing what you want. You like their graphics because that's what they are. They're graphic designers, usually the people that are doing the logos. The one thing that you are going to want to make sure that you ask for when it comes for a logo is you're going to want a dark and a light logo. And you're going to also want to have a logo with a transparent background. So all of the logo type variations, you want to make sure they have a transparent background. The reason why this is important is, is depending on whatever you're putting your logo on, you don't want to be constrained, constrained by um, the background color of it. So you want it to be transparent. What if you put something, let's say you have a black logo and you have a transparent background and you put that on a black background it won't be visible. So you need a light variation of your logo. So you want to make sure that you have a logo link. Uh, I mean, a logo that is a dark and a light logo um, as well. All right. So Fiverr, you can use Fiverr or you, if you, if you're feeling graphically inclined, you can use Canva. I just say, you know, Fiverr, like literally you can get a logo where it used to be. I remember the first logo I bought was like $500. Logos on Fiverr, you can get a logo as low as $25, $50. Pretty good a graphic artist too. What you're looking for, again, is make sure you ask for a transparent background, two variations of the logos, a light and a dark. Um, and you also want the, the colors that they use, so the hex codes that they use to build the logo, because you'll need that. And if they're using any fonts, you'll want the font as well. All right. Any questions on logo? You need a logo, right? So when it comes to communication, you want your um, your brand logo to be on. Like if you do social media posts, if you do an email, you want your logo to be present. We pretty much use your logo, a standard logo on everything that goes out on your behalf in the system. So Fiverr is a really good place for that. Um, and you need it and you don't necessarily need the person who creates the logo to do this in the different sizes. You can do this in Canva once you actually have the logo file, but you do need a logo that's going to be in multiple sizes. Um, so 200 by 200 is going to be a nice square size. You need a large logo so you can shrink it and expand it. So, um, uh, you want to make sure that you've got uh, a logo that's designed in a large scale. And I would recommend anything over 1080 by 1080 to design it. And then you can use Canva to shorten it. So don't ask the designer to create a 200 by 200. Ask them to create a large logo file and you can uh, create a small um, a smaller version. And so Favicon, while you're there asking them for a logo, logo, ask them for a Favicon. That's just the little, like when you see here in our, um, here, it's just a little image of your business that's going to show up right here um, on the internet. So on your website and any of your pages, anytime that they're on any of your domains, you want a Favicon that's going to represent your business. So you might as well ask for that. They are going to probably give you a logo or you, when you're designing a logo in Canva, you're going to um, get uh, your uh, hex codes. Um, and hex codes are just the color codes that are associated with the um, logo. So ours are gold, black, and gray tones. And so we have specific hex codes for that. And so I've included here this link to canva.com palette generator. So if you've got a picture of something that is a picture that you love, that represents the color scheme that you want, when you upload that load, when you upload that image mm -hmm. in um, Canva, let's see if I've got a quick image. I'm just going to do this here. What it does, what Canva does for you, uh, this generator, is it gives you a color palette. 
Um, and so now you've got these colors. So if you've got a, a picture of something or you, you don't have a color palette yet, what I always instruct like our, our logo clients to do is go to Pinterest, go pick out some images that they love um, and, you know, send those images to me. And then what we do is we derive using this uh, color palette determinator, we de derive the color scheme of what is what what they seem to be liking. So this is something that you can do too. What you need are three primary colors. You need a primary color, a secondary color, and a third color. So in this palette, these are the three colors that are popping out. All right. So this could be your primary, your secondary, and then your tertiary. That's what tertiary would just be your third color. So that's what, and, and we utilize this in our communications. Again, in our social media posts, our color scheme is consistent. On our web pages, our color scheme is, uh, scheme is consistent. Anytime we show up in the marketplace, you know that you're going to see, you're going to see this gold, you're going to see this black, and you're going to see some gray tones in here. This doesn't happen to be our color tone, but ours, I, I don't remember what our hex code is for this gold, but we have a, a gold, we have black, grays, and then we have creams. All right, so that's really important is making sure that you have these things identified. If you don't, you can use the color palette to help you get that defined. You do need a headshot. You don't need a, you know, I mean, years ago I was, I was told by a coach that I needed to have like a lots of different headshots and really just one headshot is, is all you need. And man, there's like even AI software that will create headshots for you. Just upload a picture of yourself. Have you guys played with any of that? Like I've actually seen it and they, they're pretty good. Like you upload a picture it could be a fun picture and it'll turn it into a headshot for you. So you do need a headshot. It's great to put that headshot in your salutation in your email marketing. It's the headshot that you can use on all of your social media platforms. Again, what we're looking and what branding does, it creates continuity, right? And it creates a consistent way that you show up. So when people start to see you, they know that that it's you, right? They know that this is the person that they're dealing with. So these are a few of the things that you want to do from branding perspective. We utilize all of these things inside of the system. So the more you can have these readily available, then you'll just include your codes here. So what your primary hex code, secondary, let's say you don't have a hex code. Maybe you've worked with the designer and they've given you what's called an RGB code. You can convert that to a hex code as well. Maybe you just have your logo and you don't know what the hex codes are. Use the palette, the color palette generator to determine what the codes could be. All right. Any questions on that? Okay, so I see, do we need to trademark our logo? Um, you know, I just went through trademarking um, uh, the last several years. And so the lo there's two types of trademarks. There's the image and then there's the name. We opted to trademark not the image, but the name. So um, you don't, it, it really is a decision between you and your trademark attorney or what you want to do. Our preference is to trademark our name and the usage of our name. We don't we don't trademark the symbol because you could trademark a symbol and then not the name. So there's some some idiosyncrasies when it comes to trademarking that you just want to be aware of. So I would definitely trademark the name of your business. Um, and uh, it's not something that you need to do right away. I don't even recommend that you start doing it right away. But what I do recommend is once you do come up with the name that you've already verified, you've done some research, it's not, you know, you've got the domain, it doesn't look like anybody's uh, got the name, is you can start using TM um, at the end of the name. And that lets people know that you intend to trademark the name. And so that's what we did for years until we registered. So now we have a R at the end of our name and that's because we're registered now. All right. So now, now that we've got the basics down, right? So it's my hope that all of you guys have your basics down and you're ready to go on this part. Now let's talk about communication channels that you need to decide on. Who had, does not have a website? Um, so I'm talking about the domain of the website. 
anybody out there not have their domain. If you don't have the domain of your website in your ownership, it's not registered in your name. That's number one thing that you want to do. Again, I recommend GoDaddy because we integrate pretty quick, easily with GoDaddy. We integrate with Cloudflare. There's, it's an auto setup when we do that. Um, uh, and so we just want to make sure. So when I talk about communication channel, I'm just talking about do you have the website name, domain, and is it registered in your name? So um, email, do you have your business email? So if your name is mytravelbusiness.com, do you have an email hosted with that name? It's no longer acceptable for you to have at Gmail or at Yahoo or at whatever that isn't your domain. It doesn't look professional. And in 2024, at the time of this training, it, it's just like if you're trying to do any email marketing, all of the email marketing providers will prevent you and they won't deliver your content. You have to have a domain that you're sending business email out of. Now, does that mean you can't do, you can't send business email out of Gmail? Yeah, you absolutely can, but you can't send both email. You can't automate the email sending process with an at gmail.com domain. So you need to have your email hosted. You need to be sending out email from your name at your URL. So Sunday at online travel boss.com Sunday, you know, whatever your domain is, you want to have that done. So you can also register that with GoDaddy. I'm not, again, I'm not affiliated with GoDaddy. I'm just very familiar with their, I've had a lot of different companies I've used over the years. GoDaddy, I I'm now with and have been with now for years. Um, and I've had little to no problem. I like their support. They're very helpful. Um, so you need to have both website and email. So these are these are channels that you need to have, like not even an, an exception. A chat bot in 2024 and beyond, you need a chat bot on your website. So if you have a website and you don't have a chat bot, you need to have a chat bot on your website. We absolutely have the ability to do that with our software. Even if you have your website hosted somewhere else, we can uh, help you get a chat bot installed on your site as much as little as you somebody wants to ask a question and that they want to leave you a message and that integrate and be on your website we offer that ability to do that so right now i mean gone are the days that you don't have a chat bot that's no longer a nice to have it needs to be a mandatory thing that you have on your website um any funnel pages that you're doing you need to have a way to capture somebody if somebody has a question to send you a message and make it pretty effortless Everybody is pretty accustomed now a days to see on the bottom right hand corner, a little help bubble. Where's your help bubble? Make sure you have one. That's definitely a communication channel, phone and text message. If you're using your personal phone, Hey, that's your, that's your call. But all of your personal conversations that you have on your mobile device, where's the history? How do you like, you know, have you ever switched phones? I have. And I have like I don't delete any emails, I don't delete any text messages, I don't delete anything, right? But I switch phones and all my messages are gone. So when somebody sent me a text message about fill in the blank and I'm looking to search for it, I can't find it because it's on an old phone that I gave back when I traded in my new phone, right? I mean, I wipe everything clean, but you potentially have that loss of data that doesn't live with the contact record. So I, I, you know, I know some advisors that are two fists in it. They got, they got two phones, right? They got a bit personal phone. They got a, a work phone. And what if you could just have it all one, right? You could have your cell phone, right? But nobody's got your cell phone number and your business phone rings to your cell phone and that conversation and everything, the history of that lives with the contact record, not on your personal device, right? So is phone and is text message. This this time of age, not, I mean, texting on your personal phone, absolutely doable, but being able to automate text messaging and all of that, it used to be that you used to have only text messaging software, and that was usually different from your email software, and now being able to text message in one location is really the cat's meow. So do you want to text message? Your answer should be yes. These things right here are no longer nice to have. It's like you need to have a website, you need to have a chat box, you need to have an email, you need to have a phone and you need to have a text message. 
um, capability and have the ability for people to contact you through those channels. Community and group, you know, w- right now, um, for years, Facebook has been the community um, method for me for years. That, that like since I want to say we've had a Facebook community of some sort since 2016, and um, it has served me well. Um, being able to to connect with my prospective clients and my clients, we have used that like nobody's uh, business. However. I am excited about having a community that is now a part of my platform that it's all connected, right? So again, I want as much of the conversation, the publication, everything in one location. Don't get me wrong. I do not feel like people have fully adopted leaving the Facebook community. So we have both. We still have Facebook community and we have our internal system community, but our intention is to publish all stuff to our community. One of the things that's really good for you all to think about is having a community for support or FAQs or people who are actual clients and using it as a support way, right? So all of your travel related FAQs are going to be either on a blog site or inside of a community and people can be there and know that this is where they need to go to get that information. So you could use it as a support center not at, we use our communities for marketing. Um, and connection, but you can also use it as a support mechanism as well. You need to decide on which platforms you're going to be on and make sure that you've got them defined. Um, You've got them locked down. So Facebook business page, this day and age, 2 billion people are on the platform. Your ideal client, no matter how much you hate it, is probably on the platform. You need to have a business page. To me, Facebook business page is now like the yellow pages. Like it, to me, it's the equivalent. Like nobody gets a yellow page listing, although you 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 do need to have online listings of your business. But really, like Facebook business page is now a yellow page listing to me, right? It's free. Everybody, it's it's now coming up in search results. You should have business pages of your business in Facebook business, Instagram business, all of the businesses. You need to have a business representation of your business in those social media platforms because they're searchable assets that will show up when somebody searches your name. Um, So you just need to decide which platforms. Do you need to be on all platforms and communicate and make yourself available? The more you are accessible, the more you are accessible. So um, I say, no, you don't necessarily have to be on every platform, but if you have a presence there and we make it easy for you to publish content, then it's not so hard to be on all of these different platforms. But these are the common platforms that I feel like as a travel advisor, you need to have some sort of representation because they're great platforms for advisors to be on. Will you meet with people virtually? Um, Will you have a calendar to let people uh, schedule appointments with you? Let's say you do, do you do discovery calls. How will people schedule with you? Uh, you, you don't want to do it manual, right? Like nobody wants to go back and forth on, do you have time? You know, are you available at two o'clock? No, I'm available at three o'clock. Are you available at four o'clock? Right. Just automate that. Right. So calendar scheduling system, what do you have? And maybe you have something, but again, is it disconnected from everything else that's talking in your system? We want you to uh, consolidate that as well. So hosting virtual meetings. So, you know, since COVID, Everybody knows what Zoom is, right? Google Meets, Teams, everybody's very familiar with those. So it's sort of common now, you know, pre-2020, nobody knew what Zoom was. Most people didn't even know how to connect to Zoom. And now it's pretty commonplace that most people know how to do Zoom or Google Meets. And so that means your clients do as well. You should have some sort of online platform uh, to actually host a meeting with. It's great to do phone conversations, but when it comes to your sales conversations, you want to have those as near real time. We don't, you know, unless you're working a local market, most of the people that you're meeting with are, um, have never seen your face and just your voice. So virtual meetings are powerful sales, selling tools for people to actually see you and connect with you. Um, is a really powerful way. So having some sort of way to host virtual meetings is really important. All right, any questions on this part? Because now 
once you decide on the channels, what we need to do is acquire the channels. You need to make sure that you've got your domain for your website. Even if you don't have the website published, you don't, if you get Travel Pro Suite, you do not need to get hosting through GoDaddy. We can host your website and your web pages. So you don't need to have an external website hosting company do that. You just need the domain. So you just need the, the .com domain of your site. You uh, need to get some sort of email hosting. We can host your dedicated domain for when we send out bulk email, but you still need to receive email from your name at your URL and be able to manage that. So you will need to have some sort of email hosting. If, if you're if you're one of those and your bubble is burst around the Gmail and the Yahoo, you know, when it comes to day two, when we start talking about automation, it's going to be critical that you have some dedicated email solution um, outside of at Gmail. You can't even set it up in our account. You can't set up an, a Gmail to, to send out automated emails from. So you do need to have some sort of dedicated. You need to create a business page if you don't already have one. You need to have a personal Facebook page. There is a new feature in um, Facebook personal world called professional mode. I would love to show it to you, but I'm fighting with Facebook to get mine turned on. <laughs> I don't want to create a new Facebook personal page, but when you create your Facebook personal page, one of the things that you have is the ability to go into a professional mode. And so I will just start the Facebook page just to show you where you're going to look for it at. And if you're not able to see it, then you may need to fight with Facebook, just like I'm fighting with Facebook uh, to get it turned on. So when you click on this, um, when you click on your, when you click on your name, right, your personal profile, Three little, three little dots here, there should be an option that says professional mode. I think that's what it says. It says professional mode. And as you can see, mine does not. So I'm fighting with the help desk to get that feature turned on. If it's not showing up in your option, that means you too need to fight with Facebook to get it turned on. Why is it important to have it turned on is because just recently, I want to say in the last 12 months, Facebook has sort of changed its deliverability of content on the platform. For years, Facebook only let, you know, they didn't really want you putting business stuff on your personal page. They only wanted, and what they realized is, is, you know, we, we people with, with Facebook followings, right. To people who have large Facebook uh, friends lists, they're many influencers. And so, those people with those numbers of people keep people on the platform and they have content that people are engaging with. So Facebook in the professional mode will allow you to monetize your personal page with your posts. So like if you are, uh, you know, you do a post and it's, it gets a lot of engagement, you will start to get paid for that. It's pennies on the dollar, but every penny counts. And so you can only do that in professional mode. So we want to make sure that you've got that turned on. All right. Uh, so we want you to turn on your business page, get your personal page, create an Instagram page, create a YouTube channel. I really believe that every travel advisor and person who has a company should have a Facebook. Um, they should have a, a YouTube channel like you should have a YouTube channel because uh, it's a great way to get your business out there. If you do video, you can upload it. If you've got pictures that you can turn into video, it's a great way. It's also free SEO, right? So it's your videos become searchable inside of the platform. Okay. Um, inside of YouTube and also inside of Google. And then you need to create an owner page. So if you are on Instagram and you've got the, you, and you, many of you guys are uh, familiar potentially with Linktree, um, an owner page. This is something new that we have done where with my URL, I have linked a owner page 
to my URL, which is really a link tree. And then this is now the URL that's going in all of my link trees, right? Which is then again, getting people into my ecosystem. So I definitely recommend that you guys get your name of your, your name of your business, name of you, your name as a domain, and then you create a, uh, an owner page. And so this is something that you can do if you're using Linktree. Again, Linktree is not the same thing. You could probably write the domain to a Linktree if you're using that software and that's okay too. But again, what we want to do is create that continuity of people seeing your name out there in the internet and it's connected to your, your channels of how you get in contact with you. All right. Any questions on obtaining the assets? And let me know in comments. I'd love to hear, do you guys have all of these assets already locked down in your business? Or are these things that you need to get done? With the phone and text, can you go over again? Um, yes, you can keep one phone number and um, have calls forwarded. So let's say I have my cell phone number. I have a um, business phone, you know, we have a business phone number and that business phone number is connected inside of our system. And then when somebody rings that phone, it dials my cell phone number. So any conversation though, that's connected to, um, that lives with the contact record. Um, all of our text messaging out of our, um, out of our business, all of those text messages live with the contact record inside of the tool. And, um, it's, it's available there. So let me show you We've got a little bit of time before we go and we're going to just kind of transition to the, um, let me go to the demo account and show you. You just created your logo and need to get all the other work done. All right. Perfect. Tanya. Um, and Tabitha says she's got some work to do. So, and that's okay. So now, you know, now you know what to do. All right. So the thing, so really what we're talking about, the reason we want all these channels created and connected is really what we do well inside of our system is, is we centralize the conversation. So it doesn't matter where the, where the conversation originated, it's showing up in my system. Now, um, this is our demo account and you can see, I can tell by this icon that this is an Instagram message that somebody sent me, right? This is spam. Um, so, you know, unfortunately we can't block the spammers, but when we've got some automation that automatically deletes them, um, I just don't think it's running in our demo account, but here, when somebody sends me a message, it came from Instagram. I don't need to go open up Instagram. I actually get a message on my phone that says I got a message. And inside of our app, um, I can go right there and take a look at what the message is. This message came from Facebook Messenger. So this, you know, somebody texted me some spam thing and it came from Facebook Messenger. I got some client messages that came in, right? This came from, um, I believe this is from um, email. And then if uh, somebody sends me so you can see here, this is a Facebook DM somebody sent me, I can reply. If I had their phone and their email address, I could um, send them an email. I'm just gonna go to contacts and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna just bring up myself and show you. So here, I think these are all bogus phone numbers, but um, here, this is, this is my contact record and you can see up here that the little phone is here. We have our phone connected inside of the system. So when somebody, I could call somebody from the system, I can send them a text message from the system right here. I can send a text message. I can send an email. If they had been in chat with me and they had sent me a Facebook messenger, that icon would be, this ability would be right here. So no matter where the conversation is happening, I'm able to have that conversation either in the conversation tab, but the record is here with them all the way. So every time I make a phone call with somebody, the system, 
has the ability to record the phone call and then you can have that phone call be a part of the record, the history of your client's um, record so you can refer to it. Any text messages that you send, automated or manual text that you send out, that history is going to live here. This is really one of the most powerful things when it comes to communication, the history of when you're servicing your clients and people move from the marketing, the attraction stage to the relationship stage to the conversion stage. Being able to see that history is probably the most powerful thing that you'll be able to do in your business. One of the things that's really important here is on the right hand side, you can see every every channel that a person has interacted with you with. So for me, right, this is me. I happen to know I visited this. I, you know, I visited this website. I submitted this form. And if I had any phone conversations, I would see all of that here. I can see any money transactions. I can put notes. I can see any appointments. All of that history is right here. And so really what we want to do now is we want to make sure for those who are already on the tool or thinking about the tool as a part of onboarding, one of the things that we are doing in onboarding is we are connecting your domains to the system. And so we do that inside of settings. We are connecting your domains. We are connecting, we are getting, if you would like to get a phone, we are getting a phone. There is an application that the FCC requires that you submit, and that is not just us, that's across the board. If you want to send text messaging out of your business, there's a, it's called a, a 2DLC form. We help you get that form out. We actually have some training and some uh, instructions, but we have a phone number that's here. I don't know that the phone number, I think the phone number is connected um, in our demo account. So once this comes up, you'll see a phone number and we also then have um, the ability to send text messages out of that phone number. If you want to move over your phone number, so this is that registration I'm talking about, this A210 DLC registration, our uh, demo account doesn't have it complete, but our main account does. You'll start that. We give you some instructions on how to actually get that started and what you need to do. And so we can house your phone that connects to your cell phone so that you can receive. We also have an app that you can download on your phone and you can make phone calls from your cell phone, from your phone number through the app. So we set this up on your onboarding call. We'll set up your email. We'll set up your phone. We won't submit the application for you or with you at the time of our onboarding setup because there's a little bit more that's required. We also want you to make sure that you're ready to do that. And then um, the other thing is, is that we're setting up your domain. So any of your domains that you have. So we have our demo subdomain that's here. We will get that set up for you. We will also get your dedicated email domain set up for you as a part of onboarding. One of the things that we do is for integration, we integrate with nine social media platforms. So let me just show you that. So in marketing, we have a social scheduler that not only integrates with the messaging part of the platform, it also allows you to schedule social media posts, reels, and shorts to the platform. So inside of the scheduler, you've got the ability to um, connect add accounts and you can add any one of these accounts to your account and by virtue of you doing that is how we have the integration built in for Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, X, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest. Now, I believe there's only a messenger on Facebook on these three platforms. I feel like there is a messenger on Twitter. I just haven't had anybody give me a message. So I need to test this out, but I believe that we would be able to get the message if somebody's having a, not Twitter, I said Twitter, I meant TikTok. I know that there's an inbox on TikTok, so I believe that we also bring in that conversation as well. So we're bringing in those conversations and those channels. So all you have to do is just add them to your account and then 
immediately any messenger conversations that you're having with people will show those contacts will automatically come into your system. All right, any questions on this connection? No? All right, so the last thing that I wanna go over before we end today is, is I just wanna remind you all in terms of when you look at your connections, contacts are a really important part of the narrative, right? Because that's who you, how you interact with them. They're, what you really want to make sure that you have clearly identified is what do you need to track about your clients? For Travel Pro Suite, what we've done is we have, we've, we've thought through a standard set of fields for your contact in terms of information about the contact that you're going to want to have. And I'm going to show you what that looks like at the contact record. So when you open up somebody's contact information, uh, let's just use one of these fake me's <laughs> here. When you open up the contact record right here in the center of the screen, is all of the contact information that you could ever care about your contact. Now, do we have every single contact element that you would ever care about? Maybe you already have a system, maybe you're using like MailChimp or MailerLite or something like that, and you've got some information about your contact. Maybe you have tags. We can import those tags here. What I really want you to be thinking about is, is when you when you um, meet somebody for the first time, what is the thing that you want from them? Do you just want their name and email address or do you also want their phone number? Do you also want to know like their favorite destination? What do you want to know about a client versus what do you need to know about a client? So um, these two items are important from a tracking perspective when it comes to ongoing communication. The difference between need and no, need and want is you need demographic information from your clients in order to fulfill a booking. But do you need it when you first meet somebody? Do I need somebody's date of birth when I first meet them? Probably not. Do I need, though, their date of birth once they've made a payment and a deposit on their system? Yes, I do. So you need to make sure that date of birth is a part of the system. Now, we've already taken care of that when it comes to travel related fields around your contacts. But I don't know everybody's business. We don't know everybody's business. Do you have something unique? Let me give you an example. I've got a client who is specializing um, in um uh, expat, like she helps uh, people become expats. And so one of the key elements of information that she wants to know about the client is where do they want to expat to, right? So that's something that she captures from the beginning. Like what, what, you know, what location are you thinking about um, expatting to? I don't even know if that's the right term, right? So that's something unique to her. If you have unique information elements about your clients that you want to know, you want to write them down because you have the ability to create custom fields in the system and we can capture uh, and we can track that information for you and make sure it's a, it's a, it's an item that you capture when you get a lead. It's an item that maybe you're checking up on during the booking process. What's important, what's need versus want. Want is um, maybe you've got questions that maybe you're doing a poll and you want to know this information. So it's not mandatory. It'd be great to house the information, but it's not mandatory information. That's important to know that as well. What's a required data element versus something that's nice to have that you do want to track, but it's nice to have. Knowing that and every time you interact with clients, be thinking about those two things. What about this client do I need to know? What do, about this client do I want to know that's going to help me service them better? Those are the questions that you should always be asking at every stage of your client journey. If you're not a Travel Pro Suite member, simply go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash TPS. And if you are already a member and you'd like to join our affiliate program, you'll be able to resell Travel Pro Suite and make 30% monthly recurring income. I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. 
the time is now for you to simplify how you operate your travel business. Bye for now. If you have any questions and you'd like to join us for open office hours, we're starting right now. Go to sundaygardener.com. Thank you.